Let's take a very brief look at why is English spelling so complicated. And first, let's put some things aside. Some spelling mistakes are not because of English. They are because of the input methods that we use. For example, in laptop computers or desktop computers, we use keyboards and some errors can happen as we use them. For example, we might intend to type the word cat, but then the C and the V are close to one another and we accidentally hit the V and then we get VAT. That will be a mistake due to the input. Maybe you're typing in a hurry and you were trying to type you or the, and instead you got yo and tech. This is because of the nature of the input. Maybe you have autocorrection on your cell phone and you get the word duck when you're actually trying to write the one with the F. Again, this is because of the way the input works. But the majority of spelling mistakes that people make is because English is a very complicated language to write. There's no writing system in the world that's a perfect match for the sounds of, it lang of its language. But there is a range of how closely the writing system can match the sounds. There's some writing systems that are very uh, transparent. They have, a, they have a more direct connection between the glyphs or the letters and the sounds. Languages like Finnish, Turkish, Spanish, they have a more transparent relationship between glyphs and sounds. On the other side of the spectrum, we have uh, writing systems like Chinese letters, where there is a connection between the structure of the characters and their sounds, but this connection has, has been distorted by a long history in the characters. And so it might be very difficult to make the connections. So Chinese characters are relatively opaque to the connection between uh, the character and the sounds. Finnish is very transparent in its connection between the glyphs and the sounds. English is somewhere in the middle where English does use an alphabet, but it has uh, its letters have many connections to the sounds of English and each sound can be written in many different ways. There's an um, old joke from Bernard Shaw about the word fish in English and how you could write this word G-H-O-T-I with the G-H from enough, with the E in women, and with the S in nation. Fish. G-H-O-T-I. English is famous for having a difficult orthography. And again, it's because there's a many-to-many -many connection between its glyphs or letters and the sounds of the English language. So, for example, the sound E, as in the word me, can be written in 21 different ways. As in the words B, ski, baloney, algae, key, beach, and so on. So you can see how... If you want to write the sound E, you have to memorize how are you going to do it for every one of these words because there's there's few stable rules that you can uh, draw upon. You need to memorize them. People don't make mistakes because they are dumb. It's because the system itself is very complicated. It's the same uh, in the other direction. For example, the glyphs O, O, can represent the pronunciation U in food or the pronunciation U uh in flood. The glyphs O-U-G-H can be pronounced through, thought, or tough um, in three different ways for three different words. And so you need to do a lot of memorization to learn how to write English uh, so, uh, so that you memorize which glyphs correspond to which sound. So it's, it's writing English has never been a game of intelligence. It's a game of memory that you have to be exercising all the time. And you have to have a lot of practice to memorize all these combinations. That's why people make mistakes. There's the additional fact that English um, orthography resembles the English, the way the English sounds were in the 1400s. English has changed a lot 
throughout its history, but the spelling has remained similar to the way the language was spelled and pronounced in the 1400s when the printing press arrived into Europe. In the 1400s, when they had the printing presses for the first time, they produced uh, religious documents, legal documents. And so the orthography of the 1400s was the one that remained historically as the one in all of these formal documents. And so people never changed it and never and have updated it in very few ways since then. So we have all of these sounds from the 1400s that are no longer pronounced, but that we have to write and are now silent. For example, the K in night, which used to be pronounced knicht. For example, the GH in both night and night. Night used to be pronounced nicht. And you can see that the, that the GH still exists in other sister languages of English, like German, where this word is nacht, and the sound is still there. It used to be nicht in English, now it's just night, but we have kept the orthography from before because of conservatism and because the documents uh, from the 1400s form an eternal change of people saying, well, that's how they wrote before, and we want to keep the documents the same as they did before, so let's just keep it going. Perhaps the biggest change in the pronunciation of English happened between the 1400s and the 1700s. All of the vowels changed a lot, but the spellings remained the ones that we had from before. This was called the Great Vowel Shift. For example, the words that used to be pronounced with an A, like mat and gase, now were pronounced with E, meat, geese. Words that were pronounced with a long O, like spawn and gose, now were pronounced with a U, spoon, goose. And words that were pronounced with a long E, like bit and then bit, became bit, bite. I'm sorry, bait, bite. So it started out as bit, then bit, then bait, then bite. So as you can see, the pronunciation changed a lot in this process called the Great Vowel Shift. But no one bothered to update the spelling in to that it would match these new pronunciations. And it's because everyone saw the previous stage and said, no, we should keep our documents like they were before, before, before. And tradition has just reigned ever since. So the spelling of English is particularly complicated. People don't make mistakes because they're dumb. People make mistakes because English is a very difficult language to spell. It's complex, again, because the glyphs and the sounds are not in a one-to-one -one relationship. They're in a many-to-many -many relationship. And because pronunciation has changed a lot. But the spelling has been very conservative and has changed relatively little. That's why people make uh, spelling mistakes. And we shouldn't rush to judge when we see them around us. We should try to understand why this phenomenon is happening. It's not a problem with the people. It's a problem with the writing system.